Hello everybody, welcome to my video, this is my name's Jamie from Game. today it's an unboxing video. Okay, this is a video I should have done last weekend, but fortunately when it was delivered, it was delivered at completely and totally, and totally the wrong time for me. It was whack bang in the middle of a project I've been doing, which I have to admit is still ongoing. But anyway, that was last weekend, this weekend we're going to do it, but of course this is my Mega Mini, which I pre-ordered from Amazon, cost me £114 if it was, pre-ordered it on the 12th of August 2021. Now of course, so many have got them already, so many videos have already been put out, there's my cat. But anyway, sorry for the delay people, I did say I will do one, so we're going to open up it now, try it out, and of course, big Mega fan here, big C4 fan, of course I do have the visual hardware as well, but this is going to be superb. So, we're going to open it up now, try it out. packaging is superb, really well done, really well made, it's brilliant. And of course you have 25 games built in, but the same as CD4, you can add more. Now I do have the CD4 Mini, there, two of them actually, one from a one on a score challenge. And we have the CD4 Maxi, and it wasn't actually technically called the CD4 Maxi, many people hated that saying. It's basically the CD4, the microcomputer, basically a much larger scale, original, but of course a fully functioning keyboard and more USBs, and it's superb. Okay, so back to this now, and a lot of people have been thinking, hoping and wondering, are we going to get a full-size Amiga in the future? And I have to admit, people have been saying that months before this one was actually released, but after the success of that one, I'll be very, very surprised if we don't. I think it's going to be a very good future for this, and of course this has sold so well already, same as that. I've seen so many posts on Facebook, so many videos have already been published, but I've only heard a few negatives. So anyway, when it comes to negativity, there's not much I've seen so far, but I haven't seen every single post, I haven't read every single comment, but the only ones I've seen so far, one person did say his mouse was broken, when it arrived it was rattling inside, and others are saying the game Zorg, which is built in, is unplayable with the controller, which I have to admit, I can understand that. It's a good game, but it's difficult, even with a joystick. So anyway, we're going to set it up now, and see what it's got to offer, and I'm going to give you my final thoughts. There we go, the attention to detail is absolutely superb, I love it. And of course, we don't have a fully functioning keyboard, you need microscopic fingertips for that. But even if you did have microscopic fingertips, you would be able to use it anyway. But again, take nothing away from what they've done. The size on the back is really well made, even on the bottom. The grills is superb. Now I've got number uh, 13,090, so quite high up. Even though I did actually order it quite early on. But again, it's superb. Copyright 2022 Retro Games Limited. There we go, brilliant, really do like it, really nice piece of kit. Okay, we're doing a size comparison test, and this is my second Amiga 500, this one actually I bought, my other one which I got in 1989, my dad bought for me, and uh, that one has a fully functioning disk drive and of course a memory upgrade, but apart from that it's unmodified. This one, the only thing it's had differently is the GoTech drive, which works brilliantly. But for a 30 year old machine, the condition is absolutely sensational, I love it. But anyway, let's compare the 2 rock How does it compare with the Mini? And it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, the colour isn't quite there, but of course, being an old machine, it might have yellowed a little bit. But I think it's superb. Again, the attention to detail is really well done. It really is good. But yeah, I think Wayne Zelinsky's shrunken this one down to size. He's got a habit of doing that, hasn't he? So, as expected, the Amiga Mini also comes with the mouse. And I have to admit, the mouse will be about the same size as the Amiga. 
So again, it's based on the tank belts, which I used to have, I don't have one anymore. But of course, this is not going to be a 9-pin port, it's going to be a USB, I expect. There's a cable for it. Oh, let's grab its bag. So there we go, there is the mouse, and again, it's really well made. It's slightly smaller than I was expecting, but again, it's really well done. And of course, here, we don't have the ball, which I suppose is a good thing, because back in the other days, yes, the amount of time you have to open it up, you've got dust in there, very grimy in there, clean it out with cotton buds. But again, it's really well done. Another HDMI cable to add to my ever-growing HDMI cable collection. But this one, I know which one is which, because of course, it's a different colour. Unfortunately, there is going to be some negativity from my side. I knew this way, way back when it was first announced, but I was really, really disappointed that it was a controller instead of a joystick. I'm not a fan of controllers. I never have been. I never will be. But we'll try it out. So this is the controller. It's really, really well made. Again, it's smaller than I was expecting, but again, it doesn't change my opinion on them. I'm not a fan of control pads, but it's the same colour as the mouse, the same colour as the Amiga. But I decided to go down this route. So they're trying to go along the same lines as the CD32. Which is a very good controller, it really is, but this is a very, very fragile controller. And it's actually the second one I've got now. The other one broke, and I'm sure you're not going to be surprised to hear, it is because of the directional pad. Inside the directional pad, you've got four of these plastic clips. One up, one down, one left, one right. But they're very, very brittle, they snap very, very easily. And the first one, yeah, they snapped. And you know it snaps, because they're rattling, and two, this will rotate. Now you might be able to hear this. Yeah, some of these have already gone as well, so I don't use it very often because I'm worried it's going to snap again. So what I tend to use is, I use this one, this is a Competition Pro, which is also a very good controller. But again, the original pad doesn't snap, but it is very flimsy. But again, I'd like joysticks. I'd rather use a zip stick. I've got six of these now, they're fantastic. This is the ultimate. But yes, unfortunately, 9-pin USB. We'll try a few tests later on and see if we can get this one working, but I doubt it, but we'll try a few other things along the way. But we will give this controller a try, and we'll see what it's got to offer. But again, nice touch, but I really wanted the joystick. Now, I'm not 100 sure if you're supposed to get an SD card with this. A few people have been posting on, on Facebook and Discord that they have one, but I don't have one here. The contents, the A500 Mini, the two-button USB mouse, the eight-button USB gamepad, the USB-C power supply cable, and the HDMI cable 1.8 meters. But no SD cards, I'm assuming there's not. WHD load, load your own WHD load package games via USB. Multiple scaling options and CRT filter. I guess it's not. Right, we'll fire it up. Okay, fired up immediately, plugged into the PC and no head station. There we go, straight away, booted up to this awesome workbench screen. Right, so let's give this a try. Let's not judge a book by its cover, let's give it a whirl. Let's see what happens. So anyway, language is English. So we press the red button. So already we've used three buttons. So anyway, it's doing a quick test. It seems good here, it's fine on my TV. So we press yellow, so already we've pressed all four buttons. And this brings us up to the main menu. And we have music. Fantastic. Okay, I like what I'm seeing already. What I like about these minis is the home screen. The presentation here is magnificent. Now, they're not all like that. I don't have every single one, but I do have most of them. But the only one for me that was disappointing was the PlayStation Classic. But all of them had some really, really nice features. So 
So there we go, all different in their own ways, but yeah, this one is probably my least favourite of all of them. Doesn't even have any menu music, but also to do this test, every single one, apart from the 800 Mini, uses a different connector. The USB Mini has a USB-C, all the others use a USB-A. So anyway, I really do like it, really well presented. So Alien Breed 3D, Alien Breed, Another World, RK Paul, All Terrain Racing, Battle Chess, Cadaver, California Games, Chaos Engine, Dragon Breath, F-16 Combat Pilots, Kickoff 2, Lost Patrol, Power Droid 90, People Dreams, Product X, Quack, Sentinel, Summon the Sorcerer, Speed World 2, Stock Racer, Racer, Supergrass 2, Titans of Fox, Worms, Director's Cut, and Zool. So anyway, let's see what we've got in store. We've got Favourites, Sort, Start Game and Menu. Let's press the menu screen and see what we've got. So we've got Display Options, System Options, Language, Advanced Options and Shutdown Device. So we've got our Fixed Size, a Moderate Zoom and a Screen Fit. Enable CRT Effect and Enable Image Smoothing. We want to try and keep it as original as possible. So we'll keep it at Fixed Size. We don't stretch it too much. So we press B to go back. System Options. We have a mouse sensitivity, music volume, and a power LED. So anyway, press the yellow, you do the sort. You go by sort by title, sort by author, sort by genre, sort by year, and sort by publisher. So we're going to go for Quack. This is an updated 8-bit puzzle platformer guide. Your duck to complete each scene by collecting all the keys and exit through the open door. Now that is a very small screen. It really is tiny. Right, so we're trying to do something about that. So, we press the menu button. And we have, like the CC4, our virtual keyboard. But you can also plug in a USB keyboard if you have one. Right, so let's sort that out. In the top right corner of the screen, you have your resume button. So, we're going to go back to the options screen, and we're going to sort out this display. And we go to screen fit. Okay. That's better. That's much, much better. There we go. Quack. Copyright, Team 17, 993, all rights reserved. Okay, so the game is Quack, a 2D puzzle platform game developed by Jamie Woodhouse, initially released with BBC Micro and Acorn Electron in 1989 as part of Superior Acorn Soft's Play It Again Sam 10 compilation. Our dated enhanced video budget release was released by Team 17 in 1993. This version added new features including two-player mode and additional levels. The game was re-released on C32 later that year in a double pack with science fiction shooter Alien Breed, which I have here. What a game it is. I have to admit it's performing really well. Really responsive, no lag whatsoever. There we go, stage one is completed. And because it didn't fire, we get a piece of done bonus. And that will save you eggs. Egg is your ammunition in this game. Okay, scene two. In 2006, Jamie Woodhouse completed development of the Game Boy Advance version of Quack. Microsoft Windows, Macintosh and iOS versions were also available. Now I have to admit, this controller is okay. But in this game, the first time I played it was actually on my CD32, which of course was a controller. So of course I got used to it. So yes, it's better to play with a joystick, but this one is doable on a controller. But it's a pretty good game, but I've never actually finished it before. We will try and find all the keys to open the door. Any additional fruit you find, it gives you additional eggs. But yeah, the early levels, try not to fire too much to save your ammunition. So you do it successfully, you get a peaceful bonus. Okay, do one more level, this is scene 3. But again, for this game, this controller is performing really well, I cannot fault it. But again, I got so used to playing this game on controller on the C32. Now on a joystick, I've always preferred up jumping. Even though this is up jumping, but on a controller, I prefer a fire button for jumping. But here, even though there's quite a few buttons on the controller, you need one button. One button to throw an egg. Up to jump. So you find all the keys and open exit door. It could be one or two places, depending on which level you are. Pick up additional armour, it helps along the way. Pick up flowers, it helps you towards additional lights. If you get all the coloured gems, you get additional bonus. Don't fire, you get additional bonus. Pick all the fruit where you can, and don't be run out by the time. Scene 3 is complete, but again, performing really well. Ended up with... 98 X. There we go, that's quack. Brilliant. Okay, let's see what else we can do. So on the controller, you press the menu button, and that brings up, like the CC4 Mini, a virtual keyboard, which I have to admit, I wasn't a fan of. Putting your name like this could take quite some time. And also, quite a lot of games, for example, R-Type, you need space bar. So you want to try and use space bar, you'll keep going into this. Nine times out of ten, it's probably going to kill your character. So, we're going to quit that, you press menu again. Now, if you press the home button, that actually quit the game altogether. But what happens is a box will appear at the top right-hand corner, and if you press it again, you resume play where you left off. Which, again, is a nice touch. And when you leave one screen and go to another, it should stay there. So whichever way you go, you return to it, you should be able to resume play where you left off. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the menu button, and we're going to select a different display option. So what we're going to do now, we're going to enable the CRT effect. And enable image smoothing. Uh, I'll take that off. And we we'll go to close, close, 
I'm gonna fire up again. So there we go, now we've got the CRT look. So you might be able to see the lines. However, they're not very clear on the PC, but on the TV, it's crystal clear. So, scene one, welcome, let's try an easy one. So again, a really nice touch, but then quite a lot of these minis did have this feature. But again, playing on the Amiga on the CRT was the best way of doing it. And of course, you don't want to stretch it too much. But again, it looks really, really good. You really cannot fault it. But again, a nice touch on these mini systems. There you go. Okay, next game, let's see how Zor performs on a controller. Press A to start game. There we go. Fantastic game. Let's see how it performs with this controller. Zor, copyright, Grimming Graphics 1992. Okay, so the game is Zool. Ninja of the Ninth Dimension was a platform game originally produced for the Amiga by Grimm Graphics in 1992. It was later ported to other platforms, followed by Zool 2 in 1993. And it is superb, really is difficult though, but yeah, quite surprisingly though, we've gone for the AGA version, which is good, but I do prefer the original version. I think many people did. But it's hardest now, I've had many, many attempts over the years, I cannot get past the second theme, which is the musical theme. But believe you me, I've had many, many attempts. What makes this game difficult is your characters climbing, but worse than that is the enemy respawns. However, there's many, many ways to dispatch enemies in this game. By sliding into them, spinning in the air, using your shooting ability and picking up additional skills. But as soon as you go off the screen and return to it, any enemies you dispatch returns to the scene. But the spin is fantastic, you can get multiple in one attempt. But also grabbing onto the walls or avoid spikes. But what we're trying to do is find a quiet quantity of sweets, which is located at the top of the screen. Once you've found enough, the exit door will be open to you. If you haven't found enough, go and find some more before you do. But it is difficult, but it's good fun though. The game is a platform game, relying on smooth, fast-moving gameplay. Its protagonist, Zool, is a gremlin from the ninth dimension who is forced to land on Earth in order to gain a ninja ranking who has to pass seven lands, beating the boss at the end of each one. The game added a number of embedded minigames, including several arcade games, a scrolling space shooter, and a game accessible only by making Zool play a certain tune on an in-game piano and finding certain invisible warp points. And that's the bit I can't get past. But anyway, you can also get additional skills, including the high jump, but all of them are very handy in their own ways. Sometimes you get the bomb, which means all enemies on the screen. But again, the respawns are put in place. But anyway, once you've found enough sweets, go to the exit door. But of course, yes, there is a boss battle at the end of each area. But yes, also, enemies also provide you with additional sweets, and sometimes even energy, but like being a supply trap, you've got to be quick about it or it'll float away. But also, avoid the spikes. Some enemies will fire, and some will not. But they are a handful. That spin is superb. But grabbing that wall is a good thing, but just avoid those spikes and also slide down the platforms. But there we go, it's superb. And have to admit, on this controller, it's performing really well. You can either use blue, or you can use up for jump. So they've got the best of both worlds. Air 1, 2, get ready. Zool was marketed as a rival to Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. George Allen came up with the idea of Zool as he was criticised on his previous game Switchblade 2 for having lack of enemies. In development, Zool could cast spells to get him out of trouble by collecting potions. For example, Zool could escape the pits with a high jump spell and cast a shadow spell on himself to make a clone of him, following his actions, creating more firepower. In the final version, the spells were replaced by technical power-ups. The very early name of the game was called Poots. Zool was brought into Atari ST, Game Boy, Sega Mega Drive Genesis, Snares, Master System, Game Gear, Mega CD Play 2, PC, and Rise OS platform. But there we go, we arrive at the first boss, and this one I can do, but yeah, I've never seen the second boss. Just think I should go past the second theme. But it is a good game, and it's performing really well. And I have to admit, it's not too bad on this controller. But there we go, level is complete. Time bonus, 4,200. Okay, so we tested out the controller, now we're going to move over to the mouse. We're going to fire up Simon the Sorcerer. So we press A on the controller, and because the mouse will be plugged in, you don't have to do any alterations. But is this the talky version? But again, that loaded absolutely instantly. Simon the Sorcerer's 993, point and click adventure game, developed and published by AdventureSoft for Amiga and MS-DOS. The game story focuses on a boy named Simon, who is transported into a parallel universe of magic and monsters, where he embarks on a mission to become a wizard and rescue another from an evil sorceress. Now, if it is the CD32 version, of course, we'll hear Chris Barry. Now, this is a game which I have long played on my channel, but it's superb. There he is. Looks fantastic, sounds fantastic. But there we go. It's a shame it's not the talky version, but it's still a good game in its own way. But anyway, let's try out the mouse. Okay, this mouse is absolutely superb, really nice piece of kit, really nice and smooth and responsive, what more can you ask for? Let's try it out, let's open up the drawer, and pick up the pair of scissors. All things that Simon picks up, he keeps them in his hat. So we pick up the scissors. 
And while we're in the rear area, we're going to pick up the magnet which is located on the fridge, and go through the exit door. The game setting was inspired by novels of this world series and incorporates parodies of fantasy novels and fairy tales such as Lord of the Rings and Jack and the Beanstalk. The lead character design was inspired by that of the fictional television TV series Black Adder, with a creative voice by Chris Barry for the CD budget release. There. But again, it's superb. It really is good. I've it many, many times. So I'm going to pick up the rope, which is currently on the floor, and then also some sound effects are also missing. Right, also I'm going to pick up the clapper, which is located on the table. Never finished Summer Saucer 2 though. Right, I'm going to walk on. But again, a really, really nice mouse. It really is good and comfortable too. Okay, so items, big or small, they'll go in there. We pick up the ladder and put it in your hat. A ladder will go in, a wagon wheel will not. So we'll go into the cottage. The game was well received by critics who praised the humour, graphics and gameplay with some minor criticism towards the plot. Son of Saucer went on to become a video game series with a sequel in Night Night Fire, Son of Saucer 2, The Lion of Wizard and The Wardrobe. Right, pick up the cold remedy. The game was released for PC via GOG.com in 2008 on a 20th anniversary edition developed by Mojo Touch and released for Google Play in 2013. Right, while we're here, I'm going to pick up the specimen jar. Go down the stairs and go out the exit door. But again, this mouse is superb. It really is good. Shame we didn't have the toy version, but I have to admit, I was quite surprised Monkey Island wasn't picked for the list. But of course, you can add that. Okay, you cannot go wrong with Pinball Dreams. So I'm guessing the controls here are going to be like you get on the CD32 by using the L and R buttons on the top of the controller. But unfortunately, that amazing intro sequence has not been included in here. Now, this game, of course, you do need keyboard, but the creators have pulled it very long and hard. Now, of course, there are many, many ways of doing it. You can either use the virtual keyboard and select it that way, but that is a lot more time consuming. But what they've also done is they've actually assigned a table per button. So, Nightmare is green, Mission is red, Blue is still wheel, and Yellow is beatbox. So, we'll do it like that. So, green should be Nightmare, it is. There we go, absolute classic. Looks amazing, sounds amazing. How does it perform with the controller? Okay, so the game is Pinball Dream, the Pinball Simulator video game, developed by Digital Illusions and originally released from Amiga in 1992. It spawned several sequels, including Pinball Fantasies and Pinball Illusions. The MS DOS port was digitally released by Rebellion Developments along with the sequel, Pinball Mania, on February 22nd, 2011, on GOG.com. With the support from Microsoft Windows, it received an OS X build on April 23, 2013, and Linux build on August 19, 2014. And this game is absolutely superb. In this game, you do not want any delay or lag. And you're not going to get it here. It's absolutely perfect. Cannot fault it. Every time you press that button, it's instant. So we're using the left and right buttons on the top of the controller. And again, it's absolutely outstanding. I cannot fault it. Of course, I've been so used to using keyboard, and I will continue to do that. But this is also a nice alternative. But yeah, it's really, really well done. Nightmare themed around graveyards, ghost demons, nightmares, and general evil things. Unlike other tables in the game, the name of the table or the menu does not affect the name displayed on the table itself. Graveyard. Some ports of the game, notably the game set port of Game Boy, named the table Graveyard in the menu as well. And again, it's superb, it really is good, the music's actually outstanding in this game. But anyway, you have three balls, score as much as you can, in the time you can do it. However, I've never been great at this game, I can get do well sometimes, but most of the time, I'm not that good. But People Fantasies is also very good, People Illusions is also superb, I don't have that one in my collection. I do have it on the PS1, which of course is called True Pinball, which has one additional table. But I also do have Pinball Mania in my collection. But again, you cannot go wrong with Pinball Dreams. Raising Jackpot. It's brilliant. Now, I've never actually managed to spell Graveyard. Not one time have I managed to do it. But I reckon you're going to get some serious points for doing that. But again, the lag, there isn't any lag. It's superb. You cannot fault it. There we go, it didn't quite do it. I definitely got grave. But there we go. So of course here is gonna be an issue. So we've got to press menu and then put in our initials. 
So yeah, get yourself a keyboard. It'd be a lot more easier. All you needed was two more letters. But there we go. Fantastic game. Jimmy Green. Okay, time to up the ante. So this is my USB keyboard. This also does work with the CG4 Mini. But as additional bonus, on the top we have two additional USBs. Now the Mega Mini has three USBs, one for the joystick, one for the mouse, and one for my USB. So technically, they should work as well. But also now, when I have to enter my name, it won't be so much of a struggle. So we've got to test it now. There we go, Supercast 2. Time to try out my USB keyboard. What a game. Brilliant. It was either this one or Lotus 2 was the first ever driving game I played. It was one of those two, I cannot remember which one was first. But both are very good. Is it going to work with a keyboard? It should do! There we go. What a tune. Every time I hear this song, I keep thinking my phone's ringing. This is actually my ringtone on my phone. I've been there for about six years. Right, let's try it out. So, here we go for player one. And there we go. Superb. Bingo, working brilliantly. What a bonus that is. Okay, so the game is Supercast 2, a 901 Top View racing game, developed by Magnet Fields and Public Good Graphics. The game is available for Amiga and Atari ST. The sequel to 1990 game Supercars, and the game was released for DOS as Supercars International in 1996. And again, like Lotus 2, this game absolutely blew me away. I cannot remember which was the first driving game I played. It was either this or Lotus 2. They were pretty much level pegging. But this is definitely the first driving game I played that had missiles. But they are limited. But you do earn money along the way. If you use, you prove your car. But you do have a damage meter that runs down completely, you're eliminated from the championship. And I think you will be either third or better to stay in the championship. Any less than that, you're eliminated. I think that's right. But you can improve your car in many, many ways by increasing speed, by buying additional engines, and also your grip can also improve. And of course, you can buy additional missiles. And you can also, also buy armour, which makes you a little bit more immune to missiles. Not all the time though. But yes, you can also fix your car with the money you earn. But the game is brilliant. I have to admit, I do prefer top-down racing games. I think I'm better at them. But Lotus 2 is superb. But anyway, we are in the moment of time in position 2. We've run out of missiles. So the computer can nuke you just as much as you can nuke them. If you have the missile to do it. But we're holding the fire button down to drive, and of course it's left and right. And to brake, you take your finger off the accelerator button. But again, on this controller, it's performing really, really well. But if you are blown up by the co other cars, we can have them quite a lot. That does lose you quite a lot of your damage bar, which I suppose is understandable. But you do start off quite slow. But again, with this controller, it really is well responsive. But there we go, by the skin of my teeth! There you go! Okay, it's been a lot of years since I had the last driving test, but anyway, what should your air pressure of most car types be? 30 SPI. What is the overall stopping distance at 70 miles per hour? 96 meters. What does this sign mean? No motor vehicles. What does this sign mean? Uh, danger of falling rocks. What does this sign mean? Offset junction. If you are stuck behind a slow moving vehicle, what should you do? Hold your horn until it lets you pass, overtake immediately, or blow it up with your front missiles. Hold your horn until it lets you pass. Approaching a left hand curve, when should your car be positioned? Uh, near the centre line of the road. Give an example of when should you not overtake another vehicle? On a corner or a bend. What does this sign mean? Uh, turn left. What does this sign mean? One way straight. Perfect! If you have answered everything correctly, you will see five bonus points. Normally, when I play these sort of games on a controller, I literally just can't do it. I just cannot do it. But this has been really, really nice and comfortable to play. Of course, I will still continue to use joysticks. But, you know, if, for example, my joystick were to break and I don't have an alternative, then I'd quite happily pick this. It's that good. I've got here with no problems whatsoever. There we go. Boss Battle. Product X. Really, really is a good game. Unfortunately, they've gone for the special edition, not the original version, but again, they're both very good. But of course, the special edition is a tad easier, and a tad shorter in length. But again, it's so good. A really, really great game. It always has been, always will be. Still good fun to play. Yes, it's brutal, but we love that in retro. But again, that was brilliant. This is fantastic. It is so good. There you go. Do you know what? This controller... It's probably the, the nicest controller I've ever used. Now, of course, I don't like controllers. I never have done. 
But this is probably the best one I've ever used. I've got no issues with it. It's really, really good. There are some good controllers and there are some bad controllers. This is not in the bad category. This is definitely in the greatest controller I've ever used category. That is fantastic. And that's a difficult boss to do. And I did it with that. It is so good. Right, this is the ultimate test. So I hate these bits. I'm not a fan of falling debris in games. This is my first attempt at one. In a long time. And that was fantastic. Again, cannot fault it. I cannot praise this controller enough. And that's saying something from someone that doesn't like them. Okay, time to get the empty once again. Now, at the moment of time, I really am pleased with this. Really tickle pink with it. It's really, really good. But, of course, you can add additional games to it. And a few of my friends have been doing that, and they've said to me it does take quite some time. And, of course, I had a project going on, which is still ongoing, which is why I decided to buy this. So, I'm dodging the bullet a little bit here. So, hopefully, this will be the answer to my problem. But, of course, I will be using original Amigas, of course, a lot more. But this is a good alternative. So there we go, I bought that. Now I believe it's £35 if you want to buy it as a USB stick, or £25 if you want to buy it as a CD-ROM. So I went for the USB stick. So hopefully inside here, we have a little bit of packaging, which is going to go on the floor, no doubt. But there we go, there is my USB stick. So hopefully this is going to be the answer to my problems, because again, I don't really have time to do it. So hopefully this will dodge the bullets. So I'm going to plug that into the back of the Mini, and hopefully, pre-installed, is all the games I require. So there we go, hopefully pre-installed on there is WHC Load, a Data Traveller, 100G3, 32GB. So you press that up there, that pops out there, and because the USB has all been taken, I'm going to use this, because this has additional ones. So we can plug it in the back of there, and hopefully if all goes well, again, it does work on the CD4 Mini, hopefully you'll recognise it. There we go, so we're going to fire up the Mini once again. Okay, back to the main menu again, but now we've got an additional icon here. So now we've got the USB media access. Select and launch your own WHD load archives from the USB stick. Current selected archive, no file selected. Press A on that one. And there we go. Fantastic. We've got 0 to F, G to M, N to T, and U to Z. Brilliant. So anyway, you're going to pick a game at random. But yeah, once you've found the game you want to play, you press A, which puts it into the bottom left box, and then you hit the home button to fire it up. There you go, fantastic, Cadakets, designed by Factor 5, brilliant game, it's working fantastically well. Okay, so the game is Cadakets, a horizontal scrolling shooter developed for the Commodore 64 by Rainbow Arts in 1987, and converted to the Amiga by Factor 5 in 1988. It was re-released as Sonaris in 1989, and named Cadakets is a Greek origin that was found in a phone book in Germany. The name Sonaris was created by a random name generator, and by coincidence matches a Greek name as well. I bet you guys thought I was going to pick R-Type, didn't you? However, I was close. I was that close. However, this is pretty much like R-Type. But of course, in R-Type, you have the force which is indestructible. And this one, it is indestructible, but it's called a satellite. But this time, you can only go in the front, not the back. The game takes place on the planet Catechist, a human colony in deep space. There, scientists develop the machinery with advanced artificial intelligence capabilities. However, the machines eventually evolved beyond the control of their human creators and overtook the planet. The humans attempted to retaliate through the use of nuclear and ballistic missiles, but the machine survived. Now, I have completed this on the CG4, but not on Amiga. They shared the same name, but the two completely different games. But the weapons are also very similar to our type. But yes, you don't actually need the keyboard on this one. Even though I'm actually using one, all you've got to do to detach it is you hold the fire button down. But yeah, it's good. But yeah, it only goes on the front on this one. Now watch out for lasers, they go through you like a knife through butter. Yes, the satellite is indestructible, but your craft is not. But yeah, they don't fall all the time. But also, you do get a boss at the end of each level. Now even though I'm actually using a controller, this is performing really well. Again, there's no lag whatsoever. Now that will actually take weapons away from you, and also, Every so often you hear a sound which tells you you get additional life. So you can earn quite a loot block from the score on this one. Factor 5 are normally quite generous in their games. But anyway, with this, we should be okay. Now you don't get the bit on the top, you get on the bottom one first. So again, quite a different to our type. But again, if you die, you lose all that. So this next boss, you've got to shoot in a very specific point. But with this, we should be okay. 
But yes, you do get checkpoints in this game, but they're not always in the greatest locations, especially when you lose your weapons. Not all shoot 'em ups do it, but a lot of them do. But anyway, avoid the terrain and shoot that gun. No energy bar for boss battles, but keep them at bay. But no time in this game, but they don't really sort of get them for shoot 'em ups, do you? But anyway, fantastic. Boo Boo Pow, 8,610. High score is 50,000. Six lives remain. But there we go, it's a brilliant game, and with this, it's fantastic. So this is a much better way of doing it. You want to try and save yourself some time. But of course, you want to do it this way. Of course, it's going to be a bit more expensive for you. But anyway, you can pick one more game. Chambers of Shaolin. Another good game. So again, you press A and then you press Start. There we go, fantastic, Chambers of Shaolin, brilliant game, developed by Thalian Software, published by Grand Slam Entertainment. Okay, so the game is the Chambers of Shaolin, a 1989 beat em up video game, first released for the Amiga, the port of Toy City, and Cobbles 4. The game was inspired by 1978 movie, The 36 Chambers of Shaolin, which I've never seen before, but this game is fantastic, played loads in the other days, but again, I want to see what it is like with the lag. And this controller, there isn't any lag, it's performing very, very well. Every time you press the fire button, it happens immediately, which is exactly what you want. It's actually the second skill in the game. This is the test of agility. The rules of this one, you've got to try and basically avoid contact, survive the time, and take the least amount of damage as possible. Every time you hit something, you lose 5% of your energy. The amount of energy you have at the end, if you get that far, goes towards your character's skills in the beat em up sections that lie ahead. You press fire to turn around, up to do a backward somersault, and down to crouch. And that's pretty much it. But again, the music is brilliant. And this controller is also very good. Is it going to change my opinions on controllers? No, I still would rather use a joystick, but this is a very, very good controller. I cannot fault it, and it's very comfortable too. They do get energy, but not as often as you would like. But yeah, it bounces across the screen, it's very difficult to collect. But don't get hit in the face by an axe or a ball and jump over these bombs. And do it in the quickest time possible, and the safest way possible. But not too far away, but again, the music is brilliant, it really is. It really is good. Never finished it before. Again, it's brutal. Old games are. What, 90%? You didn't want to avoid that. Failed to do so. Anyway, 5 seconds. 3 seconds. 80%. That's not too shabby. There we go. We survive. We pass the test of agility. Remaining energy is 80%. Strength is 27. Attack force is 0. Defense force is 37. Constitution is 23. But again, really is good. Okay, we're going to try it. Okay, first things first, we're going to try out the Competition Pro, which of course is USB. So I've now officially maxed out every single one of my USBs. So there we go. Now the question is, will this work? So we're going to pick a game at random. What are we going to pick? We'll see if it's already on there. We'll go for Magic Pockets. Right, I made a click, that did something. Right, the question is, what do we do now? Can I do it with this? Uh, selected Magic Pockets. Right, so you start it with that, but can I play it with this? Right, there we go. Cheats, don't be so silly, we don't use cheats on this channel. Okay, it works, but... It doesn't work on the top left button, only the top right button, which is interesting. But it does work. But yeah, that's going to be extremely uncomfortable. Um, okay, so the game is Magic Pockets, a platform game developed by Bibbit Brothers and published by Renegade in October 1991. It was released for the Toy ST, Amiga, Acorn Archimedes, and MS DOS. The total track of the game is an instrumental version of Doing the Do by Betty Boo, originally released in 1990 on the Rhythm King label. The boy known as the Big Mac Kid has a magic pair of trousers that contains pockets with infinite amounts of storage space. Therefore, it stores all his toys in his pockets. One day, the creature that lives in his pocket decides to keep the toys to themselves and play with them. The Big Mac Kid must go on a journey to retrieve the toys from the creatures. And that again was still to read while doing it. But again, like Saul, it's brutal. I cannot get far in this game. But the game is good. But this one, the enemies don't really respawn this one. The biggest problem is how many hits the enemies take, even on the early points. Now, each level has a different weapon. This one is the cave we have the whirlwinds. Now, you hold the fire button down and you can charge it up. The bigger the whirlwind, the more powerful it is. And if you time it well, you actually absorb the enemy. And that is a good way of getting you additional items. 
and possibly even special skills, including life, for example. But you want to try and get the gold stars, they're the ultimates. But also, if you press down on it, you can hurl into the air. Any enemies caught with that will ruin their day. And that's definitely a good way of killing multiple at once. Now, at the bottom of the screen, we have the hand, which shows us we've got three fingers and one thumb. So we've got four lives. We can replenish those by picking up bottles of milk. But you want to try and kill as many with one as possible. That's the best way of doing it. Also, you can break the blocks. Now, the bottom right tells you the strength of your power. So when it's maxed out, go for it. But yeah, sometimes it's difficult to do. And this is much slower way of doing it. But yeah, charging it up sometimes can take a while. But again, you can get additional skills along the way. But you want to try and retrieve a toy from each area. Which the cave is the bike. The game is a platform game, allowing walking, jumping and hurling items at defeated foes. There are four areas in the game. The cave, the jungle, the river and the mountain areas. Each of which is split into several stages. Including a bonus stage where the Big Mac Kit must outdo the creatures depending on what toy he's retrieving. For example, the bike can be found in the cave area, and the bonus stage is the bike against other creatures. A bike ride, basically. Which, again, I've never actually done before. But anyway, try and pick up additional skills along the way and pick up whatever you can. But yeah, enemies are already going to take quite a few hits, sometimes even two of those. But the stars are what you want to try and get. But you also get bubble gum, which allows you to get the higher ground. But when you're using the bubble gum, you cannot actually fire. But again, it's a good game. Of course, this was actually part of Motormouth, which is also an old school Saturday morning pre program, which is watching the other day. You play it while using your telephone. Now, this game is difficult no matter what you use, but on a telephone, that's got to be so difficult. There is the bitmap change that calls all enemies on the screen. But anyway, this joystick, I'm using the Competition Pro, and it's working okay, but not as well as I was hoping, because unfortunately, the button I want to use at the top left won't work. So we're using the top right, which is making it quite uncomfortable for me, but I'm sure there's a way you can actually mod that. How you do it, I don't know. You need to go into instruction manual, but I suppose there are other ways you probably could do it. But again, it's a learning thing, I suppose. But anyway, just lost another life though, but it can replenish that. But yeah, use that whenever you can. And the bike is at the top there, but that's not the end of the area. Even though there's only four areas, the levels are quite long. But again, try and kill as many as you possibly can. Don't get hit in the face by bricks. These guys are the worst. But this is actually quite a fast version. If you play on the 500, it does tend to struggle a little bit. But yeah, we are firing quite quickly. But we are moving quite quickly too. But you've got to try and get to high grounds by using the whirlwind. Now if you press down and let go of the fire button, then it goes right near your feet. Making it easy to do. So, one more, we're going to get to the bike. Press down, get on the bike, and then you've got to tap the button like there's no tomorrow. You do it fast enough, you get a wheelie. But again, it's a really good game, and it's performing really well. It just needs a slight modification. But apart from that, it works well. Well done. There we go. Toy bonus. What do we get? Life bonus. Kill bonus. There you go. 38,800 of it we got there. But again, it's fantastic. Okay, I'm going to give this a try. This is my Monster Joystick 9-pin adapter. This is hopefully going to allow me to play this game with the Zipstick. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, we're going to try this bad boy out. This is what I bought from MonsterJoysticks.com. This is a 9-pin adapter, which of course goes to a USB, which I plugged into the back of the Amiga Mini. Now what we're going to do now, we're going to plug in the zip stick into that. Now it works for the PC, I've tried it multiple times, it works absolutely superbly well. But will it work for this? If it does, fantastic. If it doesn't... Never mind, we give it a try. Okay, so I've plugged in the zip stick using the Monster Joystick adapter. Now I'll be very surprised if this works, but I decided to turn it off, restart it, and start from scratch. But there is a lot going on here, there's so many cables going in and out of this Amiga Mini at the moment of time. But we want to try and see what it can do, what is it capable of doing. But of course, over the course of time, you're going to get firmware updates, like you got on the CG4. Right, no dice. No dice with a zip stick. Okay, buddy, that's more than a footage. I'm absolutely blown away by this. This is absolutely amazing. Even the controller, I cannot fault it. But anyway, a little bit of battle chess? Why not? But until next time, this is James Warner's Games. Please like, comment, share, please try my channel. If there's a fan page, please on the Twitch. There's something more than games you find fairly easily. Please remember to hit the bell icon and notify you visit over the Tessic. With all these videos, you're better on the Twitch, happy making, and live streaming is Friday night, you can time at 8 o'clock. So I'm at Wade. See you on TDD.
not nice with a go. Ciao bye, see ya! An updated version for Amiga was given the budget release by Team 17 in 1993. An updated version... Okay, so the game is just quack. A 2D platform platform game. <laughs> A 2D platform platform game. Here we go, outtake time. In 989, as part of the Superior Arcade Sauce. This is tough. 2D puzzle platform game, developed by Jamie Woodhouse. This year released with the BBC Micro and Acon Electron in 1989 as part of Superior's Egg Sauce Play Again Sam Tam. Play it, Sam Play it Again Sam 10 compilation. That's quite a lot to say there. Play it Again Sam. Play it Again Sam 10 compilation. Okay, so the game is Quack, a 2D puzzle platform game, developed by Jamie Woodhouse. Initially released with BBC Micro and Acon Electron in 1989 as part of Superior's Egg Sauce Play it Again Sam Tam. I can't say that! Play it Again Sam 10. Play it Sam. Play it again, Sam 10. Play it again, Sam 10. Compilation. Play it again, Sam 10. Compilation. Play it again, Sam 10. Okay, so the game is Ninja. No, it's not Jamie. Zor, Ninja of the Night's Dimension. Pack the game originally produced by Mega. Go on, my son. Oh, no, 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 no. There we go, get on the box. Don't press A. Just that. Alright. And I've killed this boss so many times. The CG4 version, the only version this tactic doesn't work on. So, attach the force, attack with the force. 100,400 points. Two lives. Amazing game. Performing really well. I like it. And I did it with this. That's not too shabby at all. Stage one clear. The boy known as the Big Mac Kid has a pair of magic trousers that contains pockets with infinite amount of storage space. And therefore, he stores all his tools. Tools. Toys. Of course, tools, is he? The title track of the game is an instrumental version of Doing the Do by Betty Boo, originally released in the 1990 Rhythm. 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 Rhythm, Rhythm. The boy known as the Bitmap Kid wears a magic pair of trousers that contains a pocket with an infinite amount of space, and therefore, he stores all his tools in his pocket. Tools. Toys, Jamie, not his tools. Thank you.